Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at St. John Lutheran Church. It's good to be with you here in God's house on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. A couple of announcements before we begin worship. Uh, we are having a youth event uh, later this afternoon from 12 until 2. Uh, and that will be out uh, here in the commons in the courtyard. Uh, from 12 to 2, uh, pizza will be provided and they'll have a few activities. So again, youth event this afternoon. Uh, also, uh, later this morning, I will be starting a new Bible study uh, on the book of Micah. So you are welcome to join us for that. Uh, that will start at 945 over in the music room. So again, a Bible study on the book of Micah. Also, next month, uh, I'm going to be starting a, a new class, a, a Lutheranism 101 class. It's, this is a class that is especially for our new members, but for any uh, uh, member who's interested in getting a refresher course and just maybe wanted to get to new, uh, know uh, other members of the St. John. And so that will be uh, starting, there'll be three Thursday nights later uh, next month. And also this Wednesday, uh, we are having a missionary. Uh, her name is Anna Benter. Uh, she is from Seymour. She is going to be coming here on Wednesday to give a presentation. Uh, her presentation will be at 11 a.m. in the Commons. Uh, follow, following her presentation, the Ladies Aid and LWML will be hosting a lunch, and so you are welcome to join us for that. Uh, for more information on all those and other events, I invite you to take a look at our uh, printed news and notes. With that, let us go ahead and rise and greet one another in the name of God. <coughs>
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As I called and ordained sermon to Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We chant responsibly the intro.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of your daily mercies, that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old, Testament reading is, the Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 20. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him, or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart as it, as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him, say all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived, then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior, Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. The Epistles from Romans chapter 6. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then, are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, were, that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were, co you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit, of, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. To you, O Lord. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, 
and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. But do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear that him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are, are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But, ever, but whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, may be seated for the hymn of the day. Dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. At the beginning of the movie Gladiator, the Roman general Maximus is preparing his troops for, ba for battle against German tribes. And after speaking with some of his officers, he then speaks with a group of cavalry soldiers, giving them a sort of pep talk 
before they enter into the horror of battle. With their enemies yelling in the background, Maximus talks to his men of home, makes a joke about death, reminds them of their duty and strategy, and offers them one final word of encouragement. Moments before entering into the chaos and violence of combat, the battle-hardened general speaks gently with his battle-hardened men, saying, Brothers, what we do in life echoes in eternity. This pep talk is a profound scene that sets up the battle that follows. And the general's words instill courage, confidence, and loyalty in the face of a hor horrible, terrifying battle. While none of us have needed a pep talk before going into battle against German tribes, most of us have received or given pep talks of various types. A boss excitedly promoting a project to her employees. A coach hyping up his team for a playoff game. A person encouraging a discouraged friend. Pep talks are used in varying degrees to bolster excitement, focus energy, uplift spirits, and so on. At different points in life, we all need to give and receive pep talks. In a way, Matthew 10 is a pep talk given by our Lord. As we saw last week, Jesus called and sent out his 12 apostles. And that had to be pretty awesome for these men to be selected by Jesus and sent out by him. And as he sends them out, he gives them a pep talk. And the initial sending is awesome. Jesus gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and affliction. Talk about encouraging and confidence building. But Jesus continued his pep talk to the apostles, giving them further instructions in the early part of Matthew chapter 10. And the instructions get less exciting. Jesus stated that the apostles would go without pay. They'd be rejected by some villages. That they're being sent out as sheep among wolves. And they'll be turned over to the authorities and flogged. And when we get to today's reading, Jesus continued. Brother will turn against brother, father against child, children against parents. They'll be hated for Jesus' name's sake. They'll be persecuted and forced to flee the towns they're ministering to. Yikes. Jesus' pep talk feels more like a sentence hearing than an inspiring speech. But Jesus doesn't mince words for his disciples. He's being straightforward with them regarding the mission he's entrusted to them. Yes, there's going to be awesome things when they preach the kingdom of God and cast out demons and heal afflictions. But there's also going to be difficult things. For the word of God that they were sent to preach would not be received by all. Many would reject it. The preaching of God's word in the kingdom of God would result in rejection, persecution, and even families turning on each other. The disciples, while elated that Jesus chose them to be his apostles, must have been wondering, what in the world have I gotten into? Well, as we've talked about the last couple of weeks, one of the themes that pops up throughout the Gospel of Matthew is that of the kingdom of God. And Jesus has called his disciples and brought them into the kingdom of God. That is, through faith, Jesus has brought them under his rule and reign. And it's truly a blessing to be, to be brought under God's gracious rule and reign through Jesus. But being in the kingdom of God isn't a call to live in a luxurious palace with no cares in the world. It's a call to discipleship. It's a call to follow Jesus. And here in Matthew 10, Jesus is painting the realistic picture of what it means to follow Jesus. And he's particularly painting the picture for what it will specifically be like for his 12 apostles, for they had a unique calling and mission from Jesus. But in describing their specific mission and calling, Jesus also paints a broader picture of what discipleship will be like for Christians in general, but even more so for those who are called to serve in ministry and mission. All whom Jesus has called to be his disciples will face challenges because of God's word and their faith in Christ. 
Christians called to serve in ministry will face unique challenges because of their call to proclaim and teach God's word. Ministry in our Lord's church is not easy. Being a Christian isn't easy. But whether a Christian serves in ministry or not, all Christians have the same call to follow Christ. And it's not easy. We're not called to tread down the broad and easy path, but the straight and narrow one. And as we walk down the narrow path, Jesus gives us crosses to bear. For Christ has not called us to comfort, leisure, privilege, or an easygoing life full of fun and pleasure. One of the biggest lies that Satan has sold to American Christians is that we can live and be like everyone else. No. Christ has called us to discipleship. He's called us to follow him. He has plucked us out of this world's darkness and, and has commissioned us to live as his light in this dark world. And we shouldn't expect it to always be fun or easy. Jesus stated in verses 24 and 25, A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. Jesus went the way of the cross. And those who follow Jesus are to likewise carry their crosses. For in discipleship, Christ has called us to work, to do hard work. He bids us to follow him in every aspect of our lives. He calls us to live as the children of the Heavenly Father he has made us to be, and to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. He calls us to lay down our lives for our families. He calls parents to invest in their children and to raise them up in the fear of the Lord, to make their children's faith in Christ more important than anything else in their lives. He likewise calls children to love and obey him by loving and obeying their parents. Jesus calls us to care for his creation through our jobs, whatever they may be, by working hard with integrity, respect, and service, in order that our work may be a service to others and a witness of our faith. He calls us to set aside our rights and privileges for the sake of loving our neighbors, even neighbors we don't like, perhaps even neighbors who are enemies to God. He calls us to care for our congregation, to not view church as a customer service or a private club, but to give financially and serve sacrificially with our time, talents, and treasures for our congregation. And stewardship is a marker of Christian discipleship. And Christ calls us to follow him. We, as his disciples, are not above our teacher and master. It is enough for us to be like our teacher and master. Because in all this, we will experience the same sorts of things our Lord experienced. By carrying our crosses, we will experience hardship and loss, rejection from friends and family, frustrations, disappointments, and persecutions. But in the midst of these sober realities, Jesus offers his apostles and us hope. In verse 22, he states, The one who endures to the end will be saved. Our salvation in Christ is secure and certain. The circumstances of our lives do not indicate whether God loves us or not. His love for us is sure in spite of hardship and cross and persecution. God reveals his love for us as we carry our crosses in the cross of Christ. Jesus' death for our sake is the sure proof of God's gracious love for us. And because Christ poured out his love for us on his cross, it is enough for us to be like our teacher in bearing our crosses. And because Jesus has declared it is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, both to the apostles in Matthew 10 and to us today, Jesus also declares to us, so have no fear of them. No sin, no hardship, no rejection of God's word, no persecution of God's people will go unnoticed by God. 
In the midst of the challenges and hardships we face because of our faith in Christ, Jesus reminds us, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. This is a stark reminder that we are to fear God alone. He is our creator, and he alone has the authority to destroy our bodies and souls in hell. But God is also our redeemer, and he alone has the authority to save our bodies and souls from hell. For God alone is the one who made us his own by calling us through the gospel. And Jesus highlights this truth with an example concerning sparrows. Sparrows are small, insignificant animals, but Jesus reveals that God still watches over them and cares for them. How much more so does he watch over and care for his children? Over the last week, as I've been studying this text and preparing this sermon, I've tried to apply Jesus' statement regarding sparrows. For we are blessed to live in an area that has no shortage of sparrows. We're blessed to see them all the time. They're everywhere. So when I see a sparrow, which is just about every time I look outside or go outside, I'm reminded of Jesus' words. God cares about that sparrow I'm watching. He created it. It is his creature. It won't fall to the ground apart from the Father's care for it. Because that sparrow has worth to God, how much more worth do we have to God? We who were created in God's image. We who God the Son joined in human form. We who God has saved from sin, death, and the devil. So fear not. You are worth more than many sparrows. How much more does God care for you and value you than the sparrows he's created and cares for? And so in the midst of my challenges and hardships, in the midst of my anxieties in ministry and our church, in the midst of challenges I face at work, I am constantly reminded by the sparrows I see all around me to fear not, because I am worth more than all the sparrows that God loves. Just as God knows about the sparrows that he cares for them, how much more does God know about my needs and cares for me? And when I realize that God does in fact care for me and loves me, that he's forgiven me of my sin and granted me eternal life, the only response is to follow Christ, to follow him in every arena of my life, to follow him with every fiber of my being. And that, as Jesus says in verse 32, is to acknowledge him before men. To follow Jesus is to acknowledge Jesus in every sphere of our lives. And this term, acknowledge, is more than just a mental assent to an abstract thought. For the Greek word used here for acknowledge also means to confess. Christians not only acknowledge their faith in Christ, they also confess it. To confess one's faith is to actively live out one's faith in thought, word, and deed. For as Christians, we don't just confess our faith in worship. We don't only confess our faith in Christ when we confess our sins and receive his forgiveness, or when we confess our faith together with one of the creeds. We're to confess our faith in Christ in every arena of our lives with our whole being. We're to confess our faith in how we raise our kids, we're to confess our faith in how we diligently work at our jobs. We're to confess our faith in how we speak to our neighbors. We're to confess our faith in how we handle the sickness that racks our body. We're to confess our faith when we're beset by disappointments and depression. And we're to confess our faith when ministry is overwhelming and crushing. Christ bids us to follow him with our whole being. We're to confess him with our whole being. For we who confess Christ before the world, Christ will confess to his Father in heaven. And dear saints of God, take heart. Jesus is certainly confessing you before, before his Father in heaven. He does so when you live out your faith confidently and boldly, and he does so 
when your faith is weak and struggling. Because Jesus acknowledges you before the Father on account of all he has accomplished for you in his death and resurrection. He confesses you before the Father because of the faith you've received from him. Jesus is faithful to you. Jesus' pep talk in Matthew 10 is stark in its call to discipleship. But our Lord also provides hope and encouragement in his instructions. So as you face today's challenges and setbacks, as you carry your cross in faith, take heart. Do not fear. Cling to Christ's cross. It is enough that you are like the teacher. You are worth more than many sparrows to the Father. Because of the faith he's giving you, Jesus acknowledges you before the Father. Therefore, keep following and confessing Christ with your whole life. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church. I invite you to please stand. Let us pray. God of all strength, you have brought us from death to life. Do not let sin reign in our mortal bodies and make us obey its passions. Turn our hearts continually to Christ, that we would present our bodies as instruments of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. God of our salvation, your Son warned that your people would face opposition from the world. Give courage and fortitude to your pastors and church workers and all your people that they would boldly sing your praises, gladly endure sufferings for the name of Jesus, and continue by your grace to the end. And, oh Lord, we thank you that you bring people into your church to the waters of holy baptism. And we lift up to you Marai and Mara Lianis as they will be baptized later this afternoon. We pray that you would keep them in their baptismal grace. Lord, in your mercy, Father in heaven, the curse of sin brings division within families. Grant unity of faith within the households of this congregation. Give wisdom and peace where there is anger and strife. Bless parents with faithfulness to teach their children your ways. Lord, in your mercy, Hear God of all creation, you appoint authorities to keep order for the good of your people. Bless the authorities in our land with wisdom to seek the common good. Deliver them from temptations to promote evil and oppose your will. Give them penitent hearts that they might be confident of your grace for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, look with favor upon those who are persecuted for the name of Jesus. Be their warrior against the evil one. Strengthen them to endure and make known your mercy to the witness of their suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Almighty God, keep our feet from falling and preserve us from fear. Make us confident that since you have delivered our souls from death, you will deliver us to walk before you in light everlasting, in the light of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be merciful to us, O Lord, and hear our prayers. Grant to us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be led into all truth and be steadfast in the confession of Christ. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Once again, we welcome you to worship here at St. John. It is good to be with you here in God's house. And we invite you to fill out the attendance cards found in the seat backs, letting us know you're here and you can place those cards in the offering plate. As we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper here in a few moments, we invite you to take a look at our community statement found in our news and notes. And with that, we continue worship at this time by gathering our tithes and offerings.
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns through all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave him thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he gave him thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Through body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul today and to life everlasting. Depart in his joy and peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.